EV Revolution show is supported in part by Budget Safe Solar. If you are considering solar in most any part of North America, give my friends a call. They will take the time to listen to your specific situation and help you reach a decision about what's available to you and what makes the most sense. If you would like to join the growing solar industry, they'd like to speak with you. Go to www.budgetsafesolar.com to contact them. All right, well, welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I'm Kenneth Bacor, your host, as you know, and this is a special edition where I'm here covering a Bright Drop uh, press uh, event here at the Brickworks in, in downtown Toronto, a pretty cool, funky kind of facility here. And I'm going to first start off by interviewing Steve Horniak. He's the Chief Revenue Officer for Bright Drop based in Atlanta. How are you, Steve? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Excellent. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to chat Absolutely. with me. My pleasure. You know, uh, my viewers know that I've been following Bright Drop and a lot of the, I, I, I focus mainly on the consumer side, but I do look at some of the commercial stuff. You know, I think the short to medium haul is a huge marketplace for electrification, a ton of value that that brings. Maybe you could start by talking about Bright Drop, um, you know, before the GM acquisition or the partnership, what the genesis was behind Bright Drop and that thinking. No, absolutely. So Bright Drop actually formed within General Motors. So General okay. Motors has a, an innovation center mm -hmm. and they form with new ideas and those new ideas end up three different paths. They either get killed, they yeah. become a product within General Motors, or they become spun out. So right. we got spun out. So okay. we're a separate wholly owned subsidiary of General Motors. Okay. So think of us as having General Motors as our captive venture capitalist. Yep. I'm a startup accelerator. Yep. And also my outsourced contract manufacturer in engineering. Best of both worlds. So best you get of both funding worlds. and they help you build it's, it. Yeah. It's absolutely, so those are the two hardest things to do as a startup company. Absolutely. Is, is I got to go find the money and then I've got to figure out how to operationally execute at scale mm -hmm. and globally. Mm -hmm. Having those two things taken care of for a startup accelerator like myself is just a phenomenal foundation and platform to build off of. Yeah. So we're, we're, we've got the best of both worlds between what General Motors is bringing to bear, but with us from an innovation speed mm -hmm. and flexibility perspective. And I guess the consensus was there's a huge market in that last mile delivery space globally, as we know, especially with the pandemic proving the need for, you know, as that whole online business has just skyrocketed and, you know, personal home deliveries have taken off and, and commercial deliveries have taken off. So what's, what do you see as the market share that's out there that Bright Drop can <coughs> typically go after? So it's gotta be we, big. We, well, we, we absolutely plan to dominate the market space that we're going into. We wouldn't be doing this if we didn't plan to. That's what Mary keeps be, saying. So. <laughs> well, and we wouldn't be taking yeah. uh, an entire manufacturing facility. We're right. moving into Cami, um, yeah. and uh, the actual construction's actually started there. <laughs> 1.7 million square foot facility yep. that's going to be 100% dedicated to Bright Drop. Nice. Um, so if you if you look out there, e-commerce today is about three or four, you know, trillion dollars yeah. in business. Huge. And, and over the next uh, three four years, are expecting it to double. The pandemic, as you said, yeah. absolutely, it, it kind of fanned that inferno of growth. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're seeing out there is not only demand for e-commerce, the demand for uh, I've got to have it now. So that mm -hmm. is click and have to have it now, which is same day. So what that's yeah. causing that instant is gratification we instant got, gratification, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. it, you're, you're getting more and more vehicle yeah. traffic in your neighborhood. So yeah, it's bringing these, these tailpipe emissions closer mm -hmm. to where we live. Yes. So that's what's so important about what Bright Drop is doing is yes. it's incredible for the environment to remove those tailpipe emissions next to where we live. Yep. Um, number one, number two is it saves companies money. Mm -hmm. So it's good for the environment. It's also good for your P&L yep. because it'll cost, you know, we've, we've uh, estimated Minimum seven thousand yeah. per year in operating cost savings yeah. uh, by moving from ICE to EV in this space. More right now if you use the price of gas. Oh, yes, okay. Yeah, so this absolutely. is using kind of historical gas prices. Yeah. Cool. So we see massive um, uh, opportunity not just in the U.S. and Canada, mm -hmm. but globally. To be quite honest with you, in this space. And in speaking with somebody else earlier this morning, and I didn't really realize the return on that investment for uh, for purchasing a fully electrified vehicle versus a current diesel equivalent today right. that most companies go after, that return is so short. You know, the consumer base, it could be four to five years on average for, for that price that you pay right. higher for, for an all electric versus a conventional vehicle today. But in your space, it's much better. It, it, it's absolutely the perfect market mm -hmm. for this type of electrification vehicle. So um, it's a perfect use case if you think about it. So the use case of, of this last mile delivery yep. where you're bringing the zero emissions close, 
and it's the perfect from a range perspective. Yep. Um, so we've got higher range vehicles, we have higher range vehicles uh, right now in the market mm -hmm. relative to in our space of the last mile niche with the first uh, first vehicle being 400 kilometers, yep. 250 miles. Yep. Uh, we will be coming out with the der derivative versions of that that'll hit different, different mm -hmm. mileage points as mm -hmm. we move forward. Um, but it is, a, like you said, it's a perfect use case for electrification. Um, with the kind of last mile parcel. Not just that, we're actually talking to a lot of, I'll call it e-commerce and direct-to-consumer yes. and traditional retailers that are looking sure. to vertically integrate yeah. and get control of that customer all the way through yeah. and they're building fleets for the first time and they're looking to do it all electric. Yeah, I mean, Walmart's an example, right? Walmart's gonna, one of yeah. our early customers. That's right. And they're looking at they want to they want to have that customer experience and control it all the way through. Yeah. And we're fortunate enough to be part of that journey with them. Yeah, it's amazing how that you know retail environment has changed the mindset from being predominantly an in-store experience to a va you know a large percentage of the revenue being home delivery based or online delivery based now because of the pandemic and the global shift that we had. Do you can do you see that increasing? So we, we saw it, it's been mm -hmm. on the increase and yeah. then COVID accelerated it yes. and now it's plateauing out a bit, okay. a bit again and then it's, it's, it's increasing right. again. So we do see it increasing. We see e-commerce and home delivery yeah. and how you optimize that whole experience and, and a lot of retailers leveraging the assets that they have today, the physical retailers leveraging yep. the footprint that they have today mm -hmm. in combination with bringing out micro, micro uh, distribution centers, micro hubs yep. and warehouses, which again, that plays into our whole approach with mm -hmm. not only the Zevo, but also the Trace, which yeah. Trace, by the way, is e-cart backwards. So that's mm -hmm. our electrified cart, mm -hmm. which will allow you to create micro hubs, would allow you to more efficiently nice. move the product the last hundred yards, yep. which also allows for self-service pickup because it is, is fully secured. Mm -hmm. So it's the whole ecosystem that we're looking at building around this kind of e-commerce on demand, click and have yep. to have it now. No, it makes perfect sense. And uh, so I know the announcement, you had your first deliveries to FedEx not too long ago. So they're obviously one of your large uh, customers. Walmart, you mentioned. Right. Any others publicly that you could state that are on board with this? So Verizon's another one that we've mm -hmm. announced. Great. And, and uh, Merton's Merchants is okay. uh, in, in mm -hmm. the, uh, the fleet management space. Um, those are announced yep. uh, customers, but uh, needless to say, we're, we've got a massive uh, pipeline of customers and activity oh, yeah. nice. um, that are in process right now and expect to hear great things from us over the coming months. As it's got to get USPS going. A <laughs> they keep flip-flopping, but <laughs> they're, they're get, going to get on board. No, that, that's absolutely. And North American start for the, the productization and the deliveries, but do you see this as a global marketplace for you guys? Um, so North American Canada yep. uh, will mm -hmm. be initially. Um, while we haven't announced anything global, being part of General Motors and being yep. wholly a subsidiary of General Motors, yep. we obviously have our eye on being a dominant player, not just here yep. in North America, but globally. Yeah, you have the the capability to do that if the need arises. Exactly, and the, and, we, and absolutely the want we absolutely do. Absolutely uh, do. Any final thoughts you want uh, viewers and listeners watching this to kind of understand about uh, Bright Drop and, and you know the significance that you guys are making to the market? No, I appreciate it. I think that you know some of the big things to, to really think about is is what we're doing at Bright Drop is not just building an electric version of existing vans. We're creating an entire ecosystem. Uh, think of these, these vans as rolling supercomputers. They're producing a lot of data, they're producing a lot of opportunity to optimize. So it's not only building the vehicles, but also looking at all the other ways to better move packages, yes. and then the software that binds that entire thing together. Yeah, key component, you know, you mentioned the fleet management and stuff. I mean, it's uh, such an integral part of these large fleets to be able to do that. And this will come with many more bells and whistles in that aspect to be able to. And, and, and we're not looking it. to replace your existing fleet right. management system. Mm -hmm. software. we're looking to turbocharge it. Absolutely. So yeah. if, you, if you think about it, taking what you've got in place today and optimizing and making it better yeah. as you're investing in an evolutionary manner, because people aren't going to replace their entire fleets no. overnight, yeah. right? So it's going to be an evolution manner of, yeah. of replacing your fleets. But as you do that, you've got to think about your fleets differently. You've got to think about your infrastructure differently. You've got to yeah. think about how you load these vehicles differently. Mm -hmm. and that's where we're going to help our customers. Excellent, and turbocharge via electrons, not the traditional method. And one last question I did almost forget to ask. You mentioned CAMI, so for folks listening, CAMI is an Ingersoll, Ontario plant that will be producing uh, bright drop vehicles for North America marketplace, and they've already started production on that. Any production numbers that you can allude to? Any any targets that you guys are hoping to produce a year? Um, so the only thing that we've announced publicly is okay. that we have delivered our first production vehicles, yes. and that mm -hmm. we'll be ramping the production vehicles okay. pretty quickly. 
and kind of by 2025 um, at 50,000 or more vehicles nice. annually. Excellent. So those okay. are the numbers we've released publicly. And these are all based on Altium platform components, so something GM is investing has invested heavily on, of course, for their move to electrification as they're all in, including on the last mile delivery side. So thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate your time today. My pleasure. Thank, thank you very you. much. All right, so I'm here in one of the Bright Drop vehicles. We're going for a quick drive, and I'm here with Mark. Thanks very much for taking me for a drive, Mark. Maybe you could tell me a little bit about your perspective from a driver's point of view. Okay, Ken. Well, first, this is the easiest vehicle to drive. Uh, that you will ever find in the commercial segment. Uh, it's safe, productive, responsive, uh, and it feels a lot smaller than it is. Mm -hmm. So let's go. Let's, yep, go, for, let's, let's do go it. for a drive. We're, we're going to power up here. And we're both buckled in. I'm sitting in the jump seat here, buckled in, nice and safe. Yeah. And this vehicle has delivery mode on right now. So one okay. of the things we, we provide for our customers, many, of, many fleets have this in their operating uh, procedures, that the driver has to beep the horn twice before they drive away to mm -hmm. alert children, small animals, or yep. is that animals and small children? I don't know. It could be both. So the vehicle's gonna do that for us. Mm -hmm. We also have one pedal driving. So okay. the where I push the brake pedal to shift into gear, that's yep. the last time I have to touch the brake pedal. Okay. It's gonna come to a complete stop when I lift my foot. Yep. So a B-mode equivalent kind of yep. thing. Yep. And it's mm -hmm. gonna hold that position, no okay. matter whether I'm on, on a mm -hmm. hill or, or flat and it's only going to move when I want it to move. Yep. And it's a really cool feature. Drivers love it because it reduces that, that ankle movement, yes. which you, you wouldn't think was a big deal, but if you did wow. that, you know, thousands of times a day, you know. So it, in a formal life, I used to drive taxi and I used to do deliveries as well in a formal life. So I get it. You know, the repetition can really come back to haunt you over time. So. So anyway, very, very easy. We've got displays in front. It tells me uh, I have plenty of range, 372 kilometers right yep. now. Uh, we haven't used very much driving around the park, parking lot here. It's going to tell me how much energy I'm using to accelerate. Yep. And then it's going to capture all that regenerative braking energy all the way down to a stop and put mm -hmm. it back in the battery instead of turning it into heat yes. uh, for your brake pads. That's right. Now, is this a single motor a variant or a dual motor? So, next year we will be coming to market with an all-wheel drive, yep. so a two-motor system, mm -hmm. front and rear, and we, we decided to start with all-wheel drive because, honestly, it provides so much more market versatility. Whether you have a, a cold, snowy uh, northern Canada environment mm -hmm. or a uh, mountainous environment, uh, it's, it provides a very capable vehicle. So this is our uh, energy display. It's going to tell the driver kind of interesting things about, you know, mm -hmm. how, how far they've driven, how much energy they've used, and where it's gone. So right now it's pretty nice uh, sunny day here in Toronto. It's sun, not bad. sun yeah. shining. It's yeah. uh, it's uh, well, it's not hot, but uh, yeah. you know, it's it's comfortable. Three degrees or four but degrees or something. We, yeah. we could we could turn the heat on yeah. higher, mm -hmm. and then and then it, it would tell us, hey, you're using more sure. energy for climate and battery con or climate conditioning yeah. for the for the cabin. Yeah. Now, one question is: Would a driver program their route? Would it be would it be into the nav display here? And then, if that's the case, would the nav display be able to have a predictive end of range scenario or end of, end of state of charge scenario on that route? So we are working with fleets uh -huh. to onboard their custom software solution because mm -hmm. most big delivery yes. fleets they have their own tools right yes. now. So this vehicle is. Well, it's fully Android Auto, Apple CarPlay uh, compatible, mm -hmm. but we are also capable of embedding and onboarding, you know, custom apps in, into the vehicle for okay. specific customers. So, um, they, they, we are we are working with a number of companies right now to imagine how to again yep. optimize the driver experience mm -hmm. uh, for for their operators. Excellent. Yeah. So, Ken, do you want to drive now? I would love to drive. Let's do it. All right. Okay. Look right. at that nice orange belts again for uh, safety. So the police uh, can see that I'm belted up. Uh, or, or, <laughs> or the super your your fleet supervisor who That's passes true. you going the other direction, saying, "Did Ken have his seatbelt on?" Yes, yes, he does. Belt. I can see it. Unless All you're right. wearing that orange shirt. So to change, you need to have your foot yep. on the brake. Foot, yeah. foot on the brake, and then push the side button there and yeah. pull it pull it down. Side oh, button on the left, and and there you go. There's our double horn. You yeah. got the double Perfect. horn. 
I'm not going to move anything on you because you're a tall guy. I can work with this. So. Oh, well, you're welcome to adjust the seat no, and the mirrors. We have power mirrors, power windows, uh, standard equipment. Nice. So. All right, let's go do some deliveries. Let's pick up some TVs and drop them off. Yeah, or, or not drop oh, them off. It's really easy to drive, yeah. Steering is, is really easy on the driver, the pedals. Yeah, I like the... Uh, I like the feel for the one pedal because I drive a lot of EVs, different EVs, so I'm yep. used to the one pedal being able to feather it, get that exact, you know, uh, stopping experience so that it's not so abrupt. This is a really nice, easy pedal feel. And obviously, we're going to go left, stay left here. Yep. Or are we going to go right around this car? You you, you, I think you can go left or right if you well, really I'm want to. Right then, you can go so. right. He'll go, what are you doing? Yeah, he'll go. But that's okay. okay. Oh, she'll go. She'll go. We can get by. We can take a lap around here. Yeah. Nice. Very nice. Very easy. Now, this has a low gear indicator, so when would a driver use that? Well, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of a carryover from um uh you know your your internal combustion cars where there really are gears in the in the transmissions yeah. with electric drive motors what we what we do is you know we we just adjust the uh the pedal uh, responsiveness yeah. and then ken you can back you can back in here you I can back back it. into that parking spot you will it is so it. easy it is so easy let me try back in here yeah into one of those okay it's so easy because you'll get the you'll get the high def uh, backup camera. Oh, right, great. And then and then you'll notice our our uh, very modern uh, high tech backup alert. Yep. And so. Yeah. Oh, the seat vibrated a bit. So is that a warning indicator? Yes, it's a, it's a haptic back? seat, yeah. and and research like that. shows that the seat buzzing your butt yeah. is uh gets more attention than the beep 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 no it did yeah so right it's a proximity i guess within yeah. 10 feet or something like yeah, that it's, or a it's, few meters. It's, it's just like the park assist system that uh, might be on your car or suv and, and uh, uh in the, well, not bad in the yeah you did great oh, okay. yeah, you did great bad. i like that really nice yeah i like the horn function very nice it, it's so easy to drive so do you mind if we go one more time back there and back, or do we have time for that? I think we've got time. We're going to make time. We're going to make time. I might pick the right guy here. <laughs> the worst know. I'll do is get yelled at. Yeah, hey, you and me no. both, right? Yeah. Hey, you only had five minutes. What are you doing? Well, that's why I came early, so. Okay. okay. Get gets some room. Yeah, so I can, you know, very comfortable seat. Uh, the ergonomics for the driver is nice and easy. Again, good visibility all around, big mirrors, yep. big sun shades, which I think are motorized and they'll come down on their own. No, they pull they pull down manually. Oh, they and, pull down. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, very very much uh, again. On star if you need it, I see. Full, fully connected. Yeah. yeah. Really, really simple to drive. Bikers are probably going. What is that van driving through the parking lot? Well, the like last that time part? I drove something this big was actually a, uh, a 27 ton dump truck. So oh, Ford nine speed. I think it was the L nine thousand or something. Oh like my gosh! Was a while ago. So that, that was sounds fun. like a lot of fun. It was fun working that. Un there. Un unsynchronized uh, manual yeah, transmission. Exactly. Yeah, this is a lot different than that. I know. Oh, very eerie. Yeah. So I know the folks were talking about you know. The driver experience, and again, because of the repetition and the day-to-day, -day, the easy ingress, egress for this with the pocket doors, uh, easy to go back, the rolling um, yep. uh, garage door type of setup in the back, so easy to get in and out of this. Um, obviously, this has a pedestrian warning sound when I'm going probably below 25 or 30 kilometers an hour. Yes, that's exactly right. This time it's to the left, so I don't scare anybody. <laughs> Now, I understand you've had some drivers from some of the companies that you uh, started deliveries, like FedEx, provide feedback. Um, you know, what, what's what's the overall feedback that you've heard from some of these drivers? The overall feedback has, has been great. And, you know, some of my favorite uh, anecdotes are, you know, 
from from an older gentleman who'd been driving for years thinking about retiring right yeah. and he has enough seniority he can say hey i want to back in there yeah right? i i want i want to i want to get one of those electric vans yeah and so now that he's been in it for a few weeks he's like I don't think I'm going to retire this year. I might, I might stay one more year because this is really, this is really a lot easier to use every day. It is, and uh, you know, they, they they'll go, wow, this is really such a nice van. Maybe I'll go back to being a driver someday, <laughs> right? So, I mean, probably not, but uh, very complimentary at, at, at heart. Exactly. So, uh, the feedback has been has been fantastic, and uh, you know, we're 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 anxious to uh, deliver more and more units out to out to big fleets like like that. Well, that's where the rubber hits the road, right? If no, you that's get that right. consensus from from the actual drivers, right? Yes. Understanding their needs and what they go through. Again, people need to realize the day to day, right? Drivers, um, you know what they have to go through here, the repetition, right? So all these little enhancements that you mentioned. Uh, make a big deal over time. No, right? that's so right. I mean, less fatigue, uh, you know, the knees and feet, whatever. All no, that that, that's right. Again, safety and productivity were our guiding our guiding forces in developing this van. Absolutely. And so everything from like that grab grab handle by the door, yeah, uh, to the one in front of me, mm -hmm. to uh, it's all it's all about safety and productivity. All the all the features, all the technology, all support safe and efficient delivery and usage. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for letting me drive. Appreciate it. Ken, thanks for your time today. All right, and that's it for this edition of the EV Revolution Show. Thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I want to thank GM and Bright Drop for inviting me down here to the Brickworks place in Toronto. It's pretty funky. I haven't been here before. I've driven by it a million times, so pretty cool. Uh, again, if you are watching me on YouTube, I appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, please do. That would mean a lot. Click that bell icon. Get notified of new episodes as I roll them out. And if you are a Patriot supporter, well, you always know my humble thanks for that. I appreciate it. Continue to watch the EV landscape. This is only one part of a huge market space that can be electrified, and it's an important part. So again, the significance that GM and Bright Drop and some others are doing to this marketplace are huge. So continue to follow it. And until the next episode, everybody stay safe, and I will see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.